Hey Marlins, pack your bags, because today we are going on an amazing adventure across the Atlantic Ocean to the country of Egypt. Today's story is called Tutankhamun's Gift, illustrated and written by Robert Sabuda. Let's check it out. Tutankhamun's Gift by Robert Sabuda. Long ago, by the sands of the Nile River, a great Egyptian queen gave birth to her last son. The child was small and frail, and sometimes all but forgotten. Among all the children of the royal household, portraits of the family, by custom, could only include daughters. But even if the sons had been shown, the littlest boy, Tutankhamun might still have been left out. Yet, no matter how small, all the sons of the mighty Pharaoh, Amenhotep III, ruler of Egypt, needed to be educated. So each morning, practically unnoticed, the little child Tutankhamun traveled to the house of the Minoi, or tutors. There, with the other princes who were children of royal visitors from distant lands, he quietly practiced his writing when asked to speak aloud the words of foreign languages they were learning, his voice was the softest. In the afternoon, the princess wrestled, swam, and practiced archery. But since he was so small, Tutankhamun did not excel at sports. Do not worry, said his minoi, or tutor. You are a bright child, and someday your gift for the gods will be revealed. So Tutankhamun played by himself, making sparks with his spark maker or racing with the royal dogs. On his way home to the palace at the end of each day, Tutankhamun always stopped to watch his father's craftsmen. The Pharaoh believed it important to build things to glorify the many gods he and the Egyptians worshiped. It seemed there was always a new temple being raised. Tutankhamun would watch ignored by all. While workmen prepared huge blocks of sandstone to erect a wall of such a temple. He gazed with admiration as craftsmen used hammers and chisels to sculpture images of the gods or scenes of great battles on those walls. Later, painters would come and dip their papyrus brushes into pots of brightly colored inks to embellish the scenes. After visiting a new temple, Tutankhamun often sneaked into the sculptor's studio to watch the artists create beautiful statues to place inside the temple. Some of the statues were made of solid gold and they dazzled in the brilliant Egyptian sun. All this to please the gods and keep them happy. Someday, thought Tutankhamun, I too shall do something great to honor the gods. But catching his reflection in the nearby pool, he saw just a small boy slowly making his way home. Then one day the great Pharaoh, his body old and tired, died. Sorrow enveloped the land. Women threw dust in their hair and wept. The men left their faces unshaven and no celebrations of any kind took place. Ruled by Amenhotep III, Egypt had enjoyed one of the most prosperous times in its history. Like all Egyptians, Tutankhamun sadly wondered if such times could continue without his great father. The Pharaoh's eldest son, Amenhotep IV, assumed his father's power. The people were hopeful, but Amenhotep IV was not like his father at all. He proclaimed that all of Egypt should worship only one God, the God of the sun. He commanded that all temples built to honor other gods be destroyed. Soon after, when Tutankhamun walked home from the house of the Minoi, he passed the same workmen and craftsmen as before. But instead of using their great hammers and chisels to create things of grace and beauty, they used them to destroy images of the gods, which scraped off the walls of many temples and blocks of the temples were pulled down. The golden statues were put in ovens and melted. Even monuments raised to honor Tutankhamun's father were not spared. In a short time, the abandoned rubble of the temples was overgrown with weeds and covered with windblown sand. 
Tutankhamun still visited the temples, but wild dogs roamed through them, and eventually it was no longer safe. The people of Egypt whispered that the gods were angry and had forsaken them, and indeed it seemed true. The gods have left us because they have no holy places in which to dwell, the people cried. Tutankhamun felt lost and alone without the comfort of the mighty temples his father built. Suddenly, Tutankhamun's brother died. The young pharaoh's death was mysterious, but the people did not mourn for him. They mourned for themselves and their future. We need a new leader to guide us, they said. Who will bring us back to the gods? Egypt must have a pharaoh, but who in the royal family could answer such a call? All eyes turned to Tutankhamun. Many as if seeing the child for the first time, he was only 10 years old, so small, so meek. Could this child really be the last heir to the throne of Egypt? Could a boy be a pharaoh? Then Tutankhamun heard a soft voice that came as if blown across the desert sands. It was a voice that grew from the hope and dreams of his great land, a voice that he alone could hear. Evil is seen best through the eyes of a child, only the young can banish it and cause the truth to flower once more. Tutankhamun, last son of the great pharaoh Amenhotep III, turned to his people and proclaimed, I, Tutankhamun, am pharaoh, ruler of Egypt. I shall rebuild the temples and fill them with monuments to the gods so the people will have again have faith. I shall lead the people of Egypt through their suffering and tears so they believe in themselves once more. This will be my promise to you and my gift to the gods. The people knelt before the boy and bowed with their lives to follow him. And the boy Tutankhamun restored the temples of the land and ruled over the people. It was said with kindness and a true heart until the end of his days. Yes, sir.